So where are Labour on whether and when schools should reopen? Uh, we are joined now by Shadow Education Secretary Kate Green for her first full-length broadcast interview. Kate Green, good morning. Good morning. So I'm going to ask you this directly because I think a lot of people want to know your position and Labour's position on this. Is it now, in your view, safe for all schools across the country to open again in a few weeks' time for all pupils? I think it's essential that schools open in September and that all pupils are expected to be back in the classroom. And schools are working really hard over the summer to um, make preparations for children and staff to return safely. I do think the government could be doing more to support them, particularly, for example, in making sure that we've got a really robust test and trace system in place. But the right place for children to be in September is in school. Understood. I think everyone agrees on that. My question was, is it safe, not is it essential? Well, it, as I say, the work is being done now to make schools safe, but more is needed to support those schools. They may need um, more resources, for example, for extra cleaning or to stagger the school day or to make sure that children can travel to and fro uh, safely. And as I also say, without robust testing and tracing in place, you know, schools can't do all this on their own. And that is a really, really crucial element. Uh, the government has a window between now and the beginning of September to get that right. Uh, and it absolutely must do so. And if it doesn't, then you'll stand up at the beginning of September and say it's not safe. I will say that it's really vital that children are in school and every step must be taken to keep them safe there. Testing and tracing is one of the most important elements, but it's not the only element. Sadly, it's an element that isn't in schools' control. And when schools are doing everything they can to make the return to school safe, I think it's really incumbent on the government to play its part too. OK. Is the government right to make it mandatory for all parents to send their children back to school again in September and indeed issue fines to parents that don't as a last resort? I support the compulsory return to school. I think it is right that uh, parents must send their children to school. But I don't think that fining parents from low-income households is going to be good for their children. And what parents really need is information and reassurance. And I have to say that I think there are still a lot of worried parents out there. So this is something pretty urgent now that uh, we can see that the time is available to go to parents with information, hear their concerns, respond to those concerns, make sure that they're very clear about the measures that are being taken to keep their children safe. So is there a bit of a contradiction there? Because you're not prepared to say it is safe yet for children to go back to school. You want the government to do more. If the government doesn't do more of that and still says everyone must now send their children back to school, then you're going to be on the other side of the fence saying, it's not uh, right for the government to say it's mandatory. Well, normal health and safety rules don't go out of the window just because we've got to get children back in school. So, of course, steps must be taken to make schools safe and where there are deficiencies or shortcomings, those have to be addressed. But I'm really clear, and I, I just want to say this again very, very clearly, the safest place for children to be, mm. safe in terms of their physical and mental well-being, as well as their learning and development, is in school. It is really, really important that we don't write off a generation of COVID children children they need to be back in class the whole of their futures depend on this uh, i totally accept that which is why i suppose i'm maybe a little bit surprised you're not yet prepared to say it is safe you're saying it's the safest place for them to be but you won't say it's safe i think we're going around a bit in circles we here, are aren't we? i mean schools are. are doing all they can to make their schools safe and that is what they will do by the beginning of september but that's operating in a context where the whole country needs to be safe as it goes about, about its business, and that is the responsibility of government. OK. Uh, I learned this this week. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it's not actually a local education authority's decision whether schools should reopen. Apparently, the Secretary of State actually has the power uh, to force all schools to reopen, to override those local education authorities and, and councils. If you were Secretary of State and you thought it was safe, would you use those powers and, and force the reopening of all schools? I don't think that I would expect it to come to that. I mean, I think you're pointing to one of the problems we now have with a, a very centrally controlled education system that has really neutered the power of local authorities who understand their communities and can support schools more effectively at a local level. But what I think is important um, is that schools feel supported in putting in place the measures to enable them to reopen. And I think that 
what we need is much more of a partnership between schools and, and the government. When I've talked to head teachers over the last few weeks uh, about the guidance that they received on reopening their schools and what measures they should take, they were saying to me that nobody had really been able to come and consult them. They hadn't been asked in advance what they thought was feasible, what would be needed. Um, I think, you know, the government is taking a rather one-sided approach to this. It's, it's going to instruct schools to do things, but it needs to be working in partnership with heads to enable them to do them. Did Labour get it wrong in June uh, when the party seemed to side with the unions uh, and didn't unequivocally advocate a return to all schools? I think it's always important for children to be safely in school. It's the right place for them to be. I don't think that was ever not Labour's position, but... I want just to say it again really clearly. Mm. It's, it is my position. It is Keir Starmer's position. It is Labour's position that children should be in school. And come the new school year in September, that's where I want to see them. Well, that's why you have your job, isn't it? Your predecessor was a fired uh, a row over anti-Semitism, but the real reason was Keir Starmer was furious that she opposed the return to schools. And now you're in because you back it. I can't tell you um, why... Um, I was appointed to the post, other than, that, as I think you probably know, I've got a long history of working uh, in the field of children, child poverty, family welfare. Um, and so I'm really proud to be doing the job and, um, you know, very, very much able to draw on the experience I've had before my time in Parliament and in Parliament. Okay. Um, and, I'm, and that's what I'm doing. That was an unfair question, wasn't it? I think you, you'd probably argue. Well, I don't make, I don't make the appointments. No. Um, I'm just very honoured to have this job. Of course you are. Let's talk about exams because A-level results are coming this week. GCC is the week after. Uh, the government announced last week that some schools will be able to appeal awards made by, by uh, various teachers and then revised by Ofqual. Uh, do you want pu pupils to be able to appeal their results as well as just schools? I think that may be something that the government should give more consideration to and it hasn't got long to do the considering. It, no. it is as I understand it the position in Scotland where of course we've seen a really disastrous picture in the wake of the hires results. Not just that students have been downgraded but that that's borne particularly harshly on students from more disadvantaged communities. And in England we won't have that um, facility for an individual student to appeal um, unless they think that the process has gone wrong. And that's a very difficult thing for, for students and their families and even for schools to demonstrate. So I am worried that we don't have a robust enough appeals process in place and that those who are, you know, perhaps with the sharpest elbows may be able to navigate their way through it. Mm. But um, I think, you know, let's see what happens this week when we have the results. I'm not going to preempt them. But I do think um, a more robust and more transparent appeals process would be a useful thing for the government to put in place. Hi, Kate. Quick one from Hi. me, if Hello. that's OK. <laughs> um, changing gear here. Um, did Labour lose the 2017 general election because of the behaviour of Labour Party staff? I think we did much better in the 2017 general election um, than many expected us to. And the result became closer and closer, of course, as we got nearer and nearer to polling day. And that was exactly my experience in my own constituency. Um, you know, I won with a big majority. I'm very fortunate um, that that was true in 2017 and in 19. But at the beginning of that election campaign, I don't think any of us felt that confident. And I think it was absolutely right that we started by making sure that we protected the seats that we held. Um, of course, had we understood that our chances were going to be so much stronger as the campaign went on, it would be right to keep that strategy under review and perhaps put more money into targeting more seats. But the first task was, was to um, react to the situation as it was at the start of the campaign, when I think a lot of people up and down the country, staff and candidates, were really quite concerned about how well we were going to perform. Kate, final one from me. I don't know if you saw the Prime Minister's summer reading list uh, came out in the Times yesterday. Uh, he was also kind enough to recommend uh, some summer reading for Keir Starmer. He recommended uh, Keir read The Pelican Brief, which is a thriller about lawyers. I can't think why. So my question to you is, do you have a recommendation for Gavin Williamson's summer reading? <laughs> I think he should read some poetry, actually, since he doesn't seem to think it's terribly important to keep it on the school curriculum for next year uh, and for the exams in 2021. My advice would be that he should have a look at some poetry and see why it's so important to children and young people. OK, any, any poems in particular he should read? 
Um, I'm sitting right now looking at a poem on my wall here in my sitting room by Tennyson. It's a rather beautiful poem. No sleeps the crimson petal, no the white, nor waves the cypress in the palace walk, nor winks the gold fin in the porphyry font. The firefly wakens, waken thou with me. I won't read it all, but you know I was what? really enjoying that. It, I wouldn't mind if you did, actually. <laughs> Boy, um, it's about love, it's about sex. It doesn't say it, but they would really be into it. Well, that's. I wasn't expecting that. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Maybe <laughs> there we can, you go. <laughs> maybe we can get you on to do your own poetry readings at a, at a, at a later time. Uh, Kate Green, Shadow Education Secretary, thank you so much for joining us.